And you can just see this Cowboy defense is getting worn down. Oh, they really are. They've been on the field an awful long time, and, and it's uh, Jerry Jones. Talked to him before the game. He was very enthusiastic and very involved and hoping for the best here this afternoon. It hasn't worked out that way so far. The Falcons have held the ball over 10 minutes in this drive. Second and goal from the five. Rozier to about the three. See, that time they had the a double wing formation again, four wide receivers, and they only had five on five. That's a perfect time to run, which they did. They slipped, uh, I, the left tackle split, uh, s slipped off the block that time and got in there and made the tackle, but that's the, that's the kind of running you ought to do in this situation. Mike Rozier has set a new career high for himself of 153 yards, as you can see on the 20 carries. And as he was telling us yesterday, boy, wouldn't they like to have me back in Houston now? Well, they'd be looking for the fire department after this, get it resuscitated. He's been busy. Thomas in motion. Rozier bangs his way down close to the one. Well, there you go. That was a trap from the same four receiver setup. Had some running room. Well, it's fourth down, and now it looks like the Falcons will kick. And we mentioned earlier that Greg Davis, who's been in the league for four years, says this is the worst he's ever seen at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. They played a rugby game on it before the game. That helped it a lot. Well, they want to make sure it was going to be bad. 23 yards officially on this field goal attempt by Davis. Three more nails in the Cowboy coffin. And it's 19 to nothing, Atlanta. Look at that drive. Took 13.08 off the clock. James Dixon. To the 21. And Babe Laufenberg gets the call once more. And you can see by his jersey today that he spent a lot of time on his back. Hasn't been sacked a whole lot, but he has really been hurried. And his numbers reflect it. Loffenberg this half, one out of six for five yards. And it all goes back to that pass protection. He hasn't had any pass protection here this afternoon at all. Every time he went back in the pocket, it was like throwing a hand grenade. Pull the pin and fall back. <laughs> Usually with about five black shirts on your face. Falcons only rush four this time. And Michael Irvin makes a leaping reception at the 37-yard line. That's his first catch of the day. That's what they have to do. They play with four wide receivers there, finally. And that's, that's their only salvation. 16-yard pickup. Irvin's shaken up. Well, Scott Case really likes to punish people, doesn't he? And he yeah. does a lot. But I'm going to tell you something. Irvin made a great catch there. He caught it up high in his hands. No help whatsoever. He's wide open for a good shot, and he got it. You think Irvin didn't get his bell rung? He just tried to come off the field to the Falcon bench. Oh, he took a shot. No question about it. If this was a fight, he'd have gone to the wrong corner. <laughs> He's looking for a standing eight count about now. He told us yesterday he was going to get physical with Dion. Dion wasn't in on that tackle, but it was Scott Case who got physical with Irvin. Well, he talked about that about early in the game, going after Dion to make sure he knew he was there. He was going to try it very hard to block him. Here they are, shotgun again. Offenberg on first down. Throws near sideline, and it is no catch. Bobbled by Kelvin Martin. Second and ten. Offenberg again, and again, it's Kelvin Martin. That time they had seven defensive back and Blitz Sanders on the outside. Cowboys will come with their two-minute offense with nine minutes remaining. Such are the dire straits they're in. 19-0 they trail. Did they come again? Somebody's got to be open. It's Deion Sanders. Look out.
He, he caught that ball like he had a baseball glove on it, on his hand. Look at that one-handed catch. He's got a glove, but not a baseball glove. Beautiful interception by Deion Sanders. And look at him pick his way downfield. And he changes the scoreboard. Watch the dance now. This is fun. <laughs> Scott Case threw a great block out in front on Emmett Smith, and Deion Sanders brings it back 61 yards. Now, we didn't quite catch that excessive demonstration in the end zone by the Falcons, but Deion and Andre Bruce and a whole bunch of others were down there, so they'll eventually be penalized for that. So the Falcons have broken it wide open here in the second half. Davis adds the extra point. And with 8.26 to play in the fourth quarter, the Falcons have taken a 26 to nothing lead over the Cowboys. There's a flag down back at the five yard line on that extra point attempt. But apparently they will not make Davis re-kick. Disqualification! Disqualification! Unsportsmanlike conduct! Disqualification! Number 77, Atlanta! Number 45, Dallas! Both disqualified! That's Rick Bryan of Atlanta. And Hendricks. And Hendricks for the Cowboys. A concerned Jimmy Johnson looks on. As you may have gathered from Mr. Tooney, that was a disqualification on those two players. Finally, the Cowboys did go to their tight end. In the waning minutes of the game, Jay Novacek caught this late touchdown. So the final score, 26-7 Atlanta. Oh, Reggie, that doesn't put Dallas out, but it certainly puts their fate in the hands of the New Orleans Saints. If they win Monday night, they go through to the playoffs. And you like the Saints, don't yes, you? Yes, I do. Uh, you know, they're playing at home, and... You know, when you when you play at home in the dome, especially and the fans that they have, they make a lot of noise there. So you know they got a great defense, and uh, you know I think if their defense can get the offense the ball in a good field position, then they'll win. Does does defense win championships? Yes, it does. And I think that's where it starts. If the defense is not playing well, and I don't think the. That you can go to Super Bowl and win it. <laughs> All right. Well, now let's go to Gary for the rest of those early results from the games. Well, Mick, at halftime, the Bengals seem to be cruising towards the playoffs against the Cleveland Browns, but that's not the way it turned out in the second half. Boomer Esiason picked off by Felix Wright. That run back set up a Kevin Mack two-yard run. Then Mike Pagel hit Brian Brennan in the end zone, and suddenly this comfortable lead was 14-14. Boomer Esiason put the Bengals back seven ahead with this nice toss to Eric Ball. He got in the end zone with that nice move, and on the final play of the game, as Cleveland tried to tie it and send it to overtime, David Fulcher intercepted Pagel, and the Bengals are finally in the playoffs, winning that one finally 21-14. The 49ers came back in the second half against the Vikings. Steve Young in for Joe Montana, and proving he can bring the 49ers back. A touchdown throw to John Taylor with 29 seconds left to win that one. Buffalo Bills against the Redskins, more action in the second half. Gail Gilbert in for the ineffective Frank Reich, throwing a touchdown pass to Kenneth Davis in the third quarter, but then intercepted by the Redskins, Alvin Walton in the fourth. Walton ran it back 60 yards, couldn't get into the end zone, but that set up Gerald Riggs with a three-yard run. Then later in the fourth, Mark Rippon with the diving throw to Kevin Hobbs. That 18-yard touchdown just about tied it up and the Redskins finally went on to win it 29 points to 14. The New York Giants had a less than impressive win at the Patriots. That was the score you saw at halftime. Turned out to be the final 13-10 and Starofsky missed a field goal with 1.50 left for New England, which could have tied it up. More trouble for Jeff George in the second half against Miami. He was stripped of the ball. Brian Sochet picks it up. Waddles into the end zone, 23-14 to Miami. But then some heroics, his first left-handed pass of the season to Albert Bentley to keep a crucial drive alive. That set up a 55-yarder by Dean Biasucci, and suddenly it was 23-17. With 13 seconds left on the clock, the Colts got the ball back. Jeff George fired off passes in quick succession, but with one second left, 
He tossed up the Hail Mary. Six or seven players going up for it in the end zone. And it was no good. Miami have home field advantage for the playoffs. They win 23-17. And Jeff George just falls short of Dan Marino's record, unfortunately for him. He was 18 of 30 passes on the day for 222 yards, 59 short of the record. But with those kind of figures, Mick, I think he must be a candidate for AFC Rookie of the Year. I think you're right, Gary. And Dan Marino's not a bad man to be second to. Now let's take a, a little clearer look at the playoff picture. In the NFC, the only change is that if the Saints win on Monday night, they're in and Dallas is out. If New Orleans loses, Dallas are in with a 7-9 and nine record and they play Chicago next week. In the AFC, the Bills' loss doesn't affect them. Pittsburgh and Houston play later tonight. Kansas City's win yesterday has put them ahead of the Raiders. If the Raiders lose today, they will travel to Miami to play the Dolphins next week and the Chiefs get the bye, as they would be division champions. If the Raiders win, they stay at home and Kansas City goes to Miami on the wild card. In the Central, if the Steelers win tonight, they're in as Central Division champions. If they lose, Cincinnati is in as Division champions. The third wild card is still a very cloudy picture. Reggie, your win yesterday meant you get to play Washington in Philadelphia. How big of an advantage is that for you to be playing at home? Yeah, that's with those a great guys? advantage for us. Uh, you know, our fans are really getting it more into the game now with us that that we're winning. You, uh, you know, up in Philadelphia, our fans are pretty tough, but uh, you know they've, they've stuck with us. And uh, the home the home field advantage is very important. I know that because I've been up Veterans Stadium, and it's a tough place to go. Let's now go back to Gary. He's got an update on those late games. Mick, we start with the San Diego Chargers who are playing at the Los Angeles Raiders. The Raiders, of course, trying to win to win the AFC West, and they are 7-3 up at the moment. Marcus Allen on a one-yard touchdown run, putting them ahead. Detroit Lions at Seattle Seahawks. Derek Fenner has the Seahawks ahead and keeping their playoff hopes alive. Green Bay Packers at the Denver Broncos. They've shared a field goal apiece so far. And the New York Jets at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Buccaneers are ahead by a one-yard Reggie Cobb run. Tonight's game, the Steelers at the Houston Oilers. This is the really crucial one. The Steelers win their division with a win, but they're completely out of it if they lose. The Oilers win a wild card if they win, but they're completely out of it if they lose. Finally, tomorrow's game, the Rams at the New Orleans Saints. The Saints, as we know, still alive in the wild card chase now that Dallas have lost. And that's it. Back to Mick. Thanks, Gary. Question before you go. It's not that you've got my suit on, because I know they fit, but in the grass rule, a lot of debate about it. Should it be thrown out? Well, yes, I think it should. I think if you get the sack, you, you get it with the guy down. And, uh, you know, I think the in the grass rule takes away from a guy like Randall Cunningham, who can get out of, you know, any, you know he can slip out of just about anything at times. So I think that uh, it will be good if they take it away. All right. Well, Reggie, it's been a real pleasure having you in tonight. And thanks very much. I know you flew all night. You're absolutely knackered. But... Good luck next week against the Redskins. Go all the way. I'd love to see you guys in the Super Bowl. All right, Mick. Thanks very much. Right. Before we go, some important times to remember for the playoffs. Next Sunday, we have our regular program, which will start, like this week, at 8.30. But we'll be off the air before the late game is finished. So at 12.20 that night, we'll have an additional half-hour special with highlights of that game and a complete picture of who'll play who in the second round. To see how the first round will look, tune in to the Channel 4 Daily tomorrow morning at 7.45 or 8.45 when I'll have all the results and consequences of today's games. Or alternatively, later tonight, you can call the Channel 4 update line at 0898 442 444 or tune in to page 470 of Fortel. Our next programme will, of course, be Red 42 at 5.30pm on Friday or 12.30 Saturday lunchtime. So until then, from all of us here in Atlanta, we wish you all a very happy new year. Good night. Thanks for <coughs>